G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers Survival Tutorial. This time, we're going to take a look at small ship conveyors. A bit of a closer look than we've previously done, going through the differences between the large system and the small system. And then, we'll apply that and create a welding ship. Which you could easily convert into a grinding ship if that's more what you need at the time. If we head over underneath the talisman, we'll see that I've set up a little system of a small ship with a medium cargo container. And that's going to allow us to have a look at the conveyor systems. Specifically, what they can carry and what they can't. With our medium cargo containers, we've got large conveyor ports and small conveyor ports. And on one side, we've got a large conveyor linking up to a connector. And on the other side, we have small conveyors linking up to another connector. Now, the large conveyors, these can move any items you like. Missiles, hydrogen bottles, whatever it is you need to move. The small conveyors are not as flexible. You can't move the missiles, you can't move the hydrogen bottles, you can't move the steel plates, you can't move the small steel tubes. You can move a few things, you can move ores. So let me just set up this inventory so we can show which will transfer. And we've got connector, that's our connector we're attached to. So we can't move that, can't move that, can't move that, can't move that, can't move that. What can we move? We can move tools and small ammunition boxes. So Gatling ammo can move, all these tools can move, construction components, computers, motors, explosives, reactor components, all of the ores and all of the ingots can move through these small conveyor systems. There's no logical size limit. As you can see, these NATO ammo containers, they're 35 kilos and 16 liters in volume. And they can move through it just fine. These hydrogen bottles, which are bigger, can't. But these steel plates that yes are heavier, but are much, much smaller, they can't. And small steel tubes, smaller, lighter, still can't move. So it seems they were picked for gameplay balance reasons, what can and can't. The importance of this is when we come to building a grinding ship. If we're going to build a grinding ship or a welding ship, we need it to be able to move all components through it. So we can't be using small conveyor systems within the ship. We have to use the large. That means these ships tend to be a bit more bulky than you might like, especially if you're trying to get them into small areas to weld up interiors and whatnot but even with that limitation they are very useful for when you're trying to weld up large areas like this landing pad for the talisman or if we want to extend it if you wanted to build a large wall for the hangar if you've got to carry all of the parts for the hangar doors those parts for hydrogen tanks and big things like that they take a lot of trips with the normal inventory size times 10 you'll probably live with it but times three or times one, it can be a bit of a struggle. So, let's get to building our small welding ship. Unlike previous ones, the first bit we'll build is actually going to be the welder, and that color looks horrible. Let's go to that. So, on our little mounting rig, we'll place a welder first, and then on the back of that, we need to place our large conveyors. Now I've set up my G menu already, we've got our cockpits, batteries, atmospheric thrusters, medium cargo container, welder, gyroscope, not going to forget those, small reactor, conveyor tube, connector, an air vent, an antenna, and we hopefully won't be needing these, unless we're wanting to pipe to the small reactors. So let's go to our conveyor system. And let's get our large conveyor junction. These have small connection points on the top and on the bottom. And then the other four sides are all large. So what we want to do is line up the large ones so that they run across the front like so. We can then add a large, uh, not a large, we can add a welder to the front here. Let's oops, try and make these line up. Sadly, the small ship industrial cockpit doesn't have a large conveyor port on the back. 
If we wanted to connect it up to the system, we'd have to jerry-rig something. We don't need to, we'll just add a vent on the front. Since we're in oxygen, we'll be able to get oxygen that way. Once we've completed the ship, I'll go through how we can set that up so that we don't need to wear our helmet even when we're inside the sealed cockpit. If you're not in an oxygen rich environment, you can probably get away with squeezing an oxygen generator in behind the cockpit, but we'll skip that on this build because we're trying to make it as compact as possible and we don't need it. And now we need some storage to put all the goodies that we're going to weld onto our base or onto our ship, which means a medium cargo container. We need to make sure that the large ports on the container line up with the large ports on the junction so that everything will flow nicely. Components can get pretty heavy, so we'll just have one cargo container for now. And also you want to try and keep the ship relatively compact. So with that on, let's place on a couple of large atmospheric thrusters. Let's make sure we line up these the right way. So we'll put one there and another one here because we want to have plenty of lift. Then we're going to need at least one battery. We'll place the first one here. Now I want this offset back behind the cockpit because otherwise we're not going to be able to place our thrusters on properly. So if we place it here, just offset one block from the cargo container. And this gives us clearance for attachment points for thrusters both at the front and at the rear, which will be very handy. So then we can place our reversing thrusters on here. We can build three or four or five of them. Let's go with five. Then we can go around this side and on the sides we'll place four in that direction, four out in this direction, and then finally we can place five forward thrusters as well. And as you can see, these are all able to connect straight onto the core of the ship. We don't need any armor blocks to help them. Actually, let's do five. So let's do it this way. So that's all our thrust sorted out. Then we can attach some gyroscopes. We can put these on the sides here, but that might be a little bit delicate. So let's pop them down here, where they're a bit out of the way and less likely to get knocked and cause our whole ship to explode. We can then add a couple of small reactors. There are connector ports on this connector. There are conveyor ports on this connector on each side, so we can attach a small reactor on each one. Power will be a little bit of a problem for this ship, and I'll show you an upgraded design when we're finished, but this I see as kind of a starter welder ship. It's a bit more than the bare minimum, but it's still relatively cheap to make. We're going to want an antenna so that we don't lose this thing. So we can pop that on the front here. And then we've got everything we need. So we'll just weld this up. And then I can show you this thing loaded up and see how much better it is than having to weld up everything by hand, particularly when you're building bases. While I'm welding this up, you might be wondering, why not a remote controlled ship? Well, the main reason for that from my point of view is that third person is a much easier way to control this ship in small spaces than using cameras on a remote control ship or having to move around your character. Okay, with our construction finished, all welded up, this thing's pretty well good to go. We've just got a few things to set up first. As you can see, it's hovering nicely on its own. We need to set up this vent on the front so we don't suffocate. So we go to K, we go to the air vent, depressurize on. Think about depressurize as a direction of flow. Depressurize means it'll suck air through the vent into the conveyor system. We also want to set up a group with our two welders. So let's call these something sensible. Now we can set up our G menu and we can toggle this block on and off. You can see them glowing red. Now it's important to mention when they glow red, they can kill you. And I will demonstrate this shortly. 
So, if we go to third person view, we can see that this ship, without any power in the reactors, does use up the full availability of the batteries immediately. And while it's not loaded, it can turn fully 90 degrees to each side, as well as pitch forward and backwards without losing altitude. That's important. When you're fiddling around welding stuff, you'll often find yourself twisting and turning and knowing that you're safe to do so without dropping to the ground like a stone, kind of handy. Well, at least if you're anything of a pilot like me, which you should interpret as terrible. So let's put a bit of uranium in those reactors and see if that helps the situation. It probably will a little bit, but if we really want this thing to work, we should probably just add some more batteries if we want more thrusters. But then we get bigger and then we don't fit in the gaps as easily. So there are downsides to that as well. So let's demonstrate the deadly power of lasers, I mean welders. So if we leave these on and then we hop out of the cockpit, this doesn't end well. Ah! And I died. So, you can cook yourself on these welders. Let's go get my stuff. Do, do, do. There's all my stuff back. I can't tell you exactly what the deadly range is, but suffice it to say, best to keep clear of them. And get in a habit of turning them off when you get out, so that you can be safely in front of them without burning. I've died many, many times to these things. In an older version of the game, there was a way to use sensors to make these things deactivate so that you could make them perfectly safe. So anytime you hopped out of the cockpit, it'd immediately switch them off because it'd detect the character in the range and you'd be fine. It'd also mean that if you're playing multiplayer, random other strangers wouldn't end up getting cooked by your welders, which may be an upside or a downside, depending on your perspective. I might even use that as my example when I do the sensor tutorial at a later date. Let's do a little demonstration of how this thing works. Let's go grab a bunch of steel plates. Let's dump everything else because I don't need it. So I can hold about 1200 plates in my inventory. That's pretty good and as I said before, we're on a high inventory setting, so it's pretty easy to get that many in. But what happens if I start putting down even more things that require steel plates? So we can put in, that's 3,700. Let's go up to 5,000 or about 5,000, we're just shy. cargo container. So, that's 5,000 steel plates-ish. If I want to weld up something really quickly that's quite large, say I want to expand this landing pad, so put down all these blocks, If I want to weld those by hand, it's going to take time and it's going to take multiple trips. So I'd much rather use something that can do it in a few trips. If we go and hop in the cockpit and we turn on our welder, so we can see they're bright red, they're on. Let's see how much quicker they can weld than what I could do by hand. And so far so good, this is looking pretty speedy. I don't think the one on the right's even getting a look in. This is going so quickly. 
With a welding ship, a really handy tip is that if you press Ctrl G, you can access a menu so that you can actually place blocks from within the cockpit. Unfortunately, while I was testing it, it wouldn't work from third person, but if you go into first person view, you should be able to place the blocks. And if you have your welders on, you'll even be able to weld them almost immediately. You'll need to add all the blocks to your G menu again, but we can do that. So we can add the light armor blocks to our hot bar. So as you can see in third person, it's not actually letting me place the block even when I do intersect it with the existing structure. But if we switch into first person, we should be able to put the block down in front of us. And then click, click, click. Now we could even press Ctrl G, turn these on, sit close enough, press Ctrl G again, and it should weld them as we place them. So if we place that one, place another one, place another one, and you can see how much faster this is going to be to build things, particularly large things, than doing it by hand. So a much more efficient way of doing things. So we'll turn those off so we don't die. And we'll demonstrate one last thing of why you should upgrade this ship if you've got the resources for it. Currently it's weighing 34,600 kilograms. And if we tilt to the left, you'll see we're starting to drift down to the ground. So we can't quite tilt as far as we would like. And same with forwards. And then if we try and lift, we're overextending our power supply. So if we compare this one, which I'll just park here. Oops, that wasn't very soft. So we'll grab that one. Now, here's one I prepared earlier. Looks pretty similar. Difference being it's got an extra thruster on each side. And it's got these two extra batteries at the rear. It's got no reactors on board. It's all battery powered. But this thing never runs out, never exceeds its power supply. So we can press P, disconnect. And then we'll drop this one down beside and then we'll have a look at both of them together. This one, currently weighing almost 30,000 kilos. Doesn't have any problems tilting sideways, forwards, backwards. Doesn't have any problem being tilted and then lifting. Can only get it up to about 88, 91. There we go. So even doing crazy barrel roll things that you probably shouldn't want to do, you still can't exceed the power of those three batteries. Which is good because then you can fit more steel plates and other things on board when you're doing your builds. So you can see its footprint is slightly larger but not by a margin that should really affect your flying. You just have to be a bit extra careful about those batteries on the rear because if you hit them hard enough, you will blow them up. And that's definitely happened to me before. <laughs> you also need a few more components to build something this size, which may not be right for you at the very beginning. Another thing to note is for these sorts of ships, I do tend to put the connectors on the back. It's much simpler to create a small footprint with them on the back than to do it below like this machine over here. So that means you will need to put connectors that come out horizontally. That's perfectly safe because as soon as you connect, the ships won't need to use their own power to stay aloft. They'll just use the lock of the connector so they can sit there floating just fine. And there you have it. A little tutorial about conveyors and how to build your first welding ship. If you want to turn these into grinders, just take off the welders and put grinders on them, or build a pair of them. Either way will work nicely. If you've made your own welding ship before and you've got some tips, let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear them. There's plenty more to come in this series and I hope you'll join me for them. I'll see you then.